Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, welcome. Uh, I am Thomas. I am with Loic as usual. Hi. This is World Chase Talk, and today we have a bunch of people with cool haircut, cool tattoo, cool style. So much style that they could probably create a boy band all together. Some of them might be singing and I might be part of their music video, but that's a story for another time. So welcome guys, how are you? Hello! Great, Great. yeah. yeah. Good. yeah. Good. Thank really you for well. having us. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually quite a lot of people, so we were thinking about maybe you could introduce yourself like one at a time, if it's possible. So who wants to start? Sure. Uh, my name is Nicodemus Zakari. I'm the captain of the Tempest Chase Tag Team. My name is Sean Nirenberg. I'm a member of the Chase Tag Team, and I've been doing parkour for almost nine years now. Nice. I'm Kai Baldwin. I'm from Australia. I'm a musician, and he's in my music video, <laughs> dancing. It's the best thing ever. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, I'm Joe Unruh. Um, this is my third year doing Chase Tag. I've been training parkour for about 14 years now, and uh, yeah. I'm Brett Vance. I've been, I've grown up with Tempest essentially. Went there as a kid, started working there forever. Uh, I've been on the Chase Tag team since it came to America in 2020, and it's been a blast ever since. Hi, my name is Hunter Payton, and uh, a member of the Chase Tag team, and I've just loved parkour forever. I love the sport, and I'm excited to be part of the team. Um, Actually, I'm we Amy. have an intruder. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say that. Um, Amy Baldwin, I am not a part of the Tempest team, but I'm here anyway. <laughs> no, honorary. Member. You're honorary, honorary member. member, yeah. Are you just here to look after the youngest one? Yes. Babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> you need one. Me? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the what? youngest. It's actually Hunter. Yeah. No, Kai, you're the youngest. What are you talking about? I think mental maturity, I might be the youngest. Uh, <laughs> that could be Brett. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Do you want to Everyone's help? silence when I, I take the mic. Everyone's like, "Okay, <laughs> what's the next?" All, the all next right, question? all right. Uh, so you are one of the most active chase tag community in the US. Uh, you're running like chase tag nights in Tempest. You're running events at your gym. Um, you've been in every event in the US, if I'm not mistaken. How do you train for chase tag? We like to kind of mix uh, parkour training and then also train it as much like a real sport as possible. Not that parkour isn't a real sport. We like to do the weightlifting, we like to do the conditioning, making sure we're strong in all aspects. We have our parkour training, usually about once a week, I think. Lots of speed courses, lots of just making sure you can get things done. First attempt, sticks and that kind of thing. Everyone's on a weightlifting program, so we're working on that explosiveness, building up some armor of muscle, because we're going to be taking falls in the quad and we don't want to be landing bare bone. Bring it all together for like at least one or two nights a week we do chase tag specific. So it'll be a lot of hand, uh, hand eye coordination, sprinting, uh, making sure you're going one on one with another person, and just kind of wrapping that all together. So we're just hitting every bit of the chase tag world. So when you're talking about hand eye coordination, like what are you doing exactly? Because I heard that you would be training with balloons. And... Yeah. <laughs> so balloons are fun because they don't move like a person. They move really slow, and if you hit them, you don't know which way they're gonna go. So it gets you uh, tracking with your eyes and with your hands while your body's gonna be moving in weird ways. So you can throw a ball and the trajectory is gonna be pretty normal, but you can hit a balloon and it shoots the opposite way. So now you have to start and stop and go back around. So that one's a good one. You really get like your jukes really comfortable. If you're doing like threads or something where it's kind of dangerous, it gives you a little more time to shoot for it. And then we also like, will throw rubber balls at each other and uh, rubber bands and all that kind of thing. Are you planning on switching sport at some point? Because I, I don't know if you've seen these videos, but in Europe, at least we have some competitions where people are in the middle of, you know, like cars and stuff. With it's balloon. called balloon. Yeah, and they have to actually they have to stop the balloon from going on the ground. But this is a proper competition with like big sponsors and everything. I've seen, yeah, I've seen the clips. Yeah, I, I thought it looked really cool. I'm like, oh, this is fun. It kind of kind of reminded me of Chase Tag a little bit. I personally am not going to make a switch to it. I think I'll stick with Chase. I can just use the balloons for solely fun. You, you wouldn't be the first athlete doing this because uh, Clément Dumais, that was part of United, oh, he yeah. actually was part of a competition. Of really? That wow. So, so coming back on your training, you said you do like weightlifting. Who's designing your program? Who's uh, This guy. You uh, He's the best, so, man. So you're the mastermind of <coughs> yeah. the whole training of World Chase Tag and conditioning in Tempest. Yeah, so I graduated from CSUN with like a kinesiology degree, and it's just kind of broad and basic, but what I really was interested in is like the sports-specific uh, aspect. So 
like building the programs specifically for athletes to get better. A lot of studying was done to get the CSCS exam, which is just kind of personal trainer, but more. And then the best people to work with is I already have a team of athletes anyway. So as I understand the topics better, I kind of just throw in uh, specialized programs. So for like Hunter, for instance, his program is all about taking the speed he already has and just increasing it. So now he won't just have good start and stop, but he'll be able to get around the quad faster. I have Brett and Amy on a pretty similar like explosive one for those start and stops. So if you do get stuck in a corner, it's not going to be like a super long wind up. And then I got one for Sean. See the hunch to get those shoulders nice and open, extend that reach <laughs> by another couple inches. So it's fun to kind of like, it's almost like D&D where you're building up the character. So it's like Sean's our, our paladin. So what stats do I want to peak <laughs> for the paladin? That's how I look at it. <laughs> And where do you find all your ideas from the different exercises you do for chase tag? Because you come up with creative ways of training without access to a proper quad at the moment. Yeah, so that's the difficult part is trying to see what is the most important aspect. So I kind of break it up into three parts. There's the shapes, which would be just any chase tag shape, a block to stride on. You can repeat that. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. A gap to jump through and then corners to bait somebody. And then a corner debate somebody would be the most similar to like a court sport, like basketball or soccer. It's an open area where it's just based on your movement against another. So I would base uh, the training around that, kind of like how often training would be a lot of cone drills, a lot of start and stop. If it's a obstacle based, then it's just rebuilding it the best we can and just repping it as many times as possible. So when you do see that on the quad, it's not like any different than what we've been working on. And then. It's just combining those. And then anytime I need to think of something, I'll watch a lot of coaches explaining their own sport drills to get the best examples from each sport. Nico has been killing it. He's got a million <laughs> ideas. Every week we go into practice and it's always like, oh, what, what are we going to be doing today? Uh, it's Sometimes he walks in with balloons. Sometimes he just pulls out all like the elastic bands. He starts tying them up to make the craziest little gaps that you try to squeeze through without getting caught on. Um, so it's always exciting. He's always got something new. And then that's just completely separate from all the weightlifting program because it's all, it's not just like, okay, here's the chase tag program, like do these drills, which it could work, but he's like, oh no, individual athlete, here's what you need to work on. And it, I don't know how he finds the time for it, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, like having, being able to be confident enough to be like, okay, my style is different from other people and knowing that Nico will still find all of like the good aspects of that or what I need to like work on or pick apart, being able to really pick apart stuff like that and make specialized training routines for all of us is just incredible. It just makes us better athletes in general. And it's just a great skill to have as a coach. And it's incredible. Yeah, I know. I like, um, after like some of the practices and stuff, uh, Nico will ask us like, uh, what do we feel strong at? What do we feel weak at? So we can kind of gauge where we're at. And I, I really like that about Nico and how he runs the practices and stuff. Yeah. Almost every other week, I send a message to Nico through like yeah. Walshis email on my account saying like, that's great training. I, lo I love that. I'm going to do it. Like, I'm just like, all right, yeah, threading. There's, there's this every other week, even like your events you do uh, mm -hmm. at your gym. Like I, I've seen it. I was like, fuck. That looks great. Like, yeah. you, like and you don't need a quad to play chase tag. Yeah, no. it's yeah. it's better if you have access to one, yeah. but yeah. you don't need to wait to have a quad to actually like start playing, start being good at chase tag. Find a few friends and set up some stuff. Like even at our gym, we host the chase tag nights, and we don't have a quad, but we just have a parkour gym with a couple walls, which you could also just use a playground outside, to be honest. But then it's just you set up some boundaries. If you have like the rubber bands to tie up and make a few like mock threads, or just add a little creativity to it. it it's not perfect and when you get on the quad you still have to take that minute to be like okay here's like the the way i'm actually moving around but it gets you in you're still playing the game you're still doing yeah, it yeah. all yeah. yeah i think what's like really cool about chase tag is that the sport itself isn't like dependent on the quad necessarily though the quad is what like adds consistency to it and so it makes it you know you know, a consistent sport, but it's like really, we all played tag growing up. So it's like, it is something you can do anywhere and you can practice it. And like, even in weird situations, you can still kind of mimic certain areas of the quad. Like at the gym that I run weekly chase tag like classes at. CCPK, is that it? Uh, it's called the P, uh, the Parkour and Performing Arts Center. So the okay. PPAC. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I knew so, it was like something CCPK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's been really fun. It was like, you know, after the Atlanta comp, I was like, dude, because I moved away from LA uh, last year. And so I'm up in NorCal now. And I'm like, you know, doing my own training. But I'm like, 
I need to be like doing skirmishes with people. And so like, that's been, you know, I started that in January. And so that's been super helpful, but the gym I'm in, it's like very few bars. It's mostly just boxes, but there's still like sections. Like there's this one, like we have a box there. It's just like a cubed box. And the strategy that you use around that feels super similar to the tilted cube. It's like feels very similar, even though you're not able to do a lot of the same moves, it's still kind of, you know, I might be asking a sensitive question. I don't know. Do you guys are planning on buying a quad at some point? Did you start negotiating for a price? Like I've been doing a lot of the back end work of just trying to set up the best possible situation for a quad. There's up and down uh, interest with the company, which is awesome because Tempest is always trying to be on the forefront of like any big hardcore uh, thing. Uh, the difficulty is in Los Angeles, especially it's so expensive to have any extra space. So we, I found one gym that was looking for, or one area that we could have made a whole new gym, but it was too close to another gym, didn't really work. Another area that could have been like a sport performance center where there would be like physical trainers, a quad, bags and stuff. And that one almost got off the ground, but the person we were looking at just didn't feel it at that point. So it's been kind of an up and down journey. The hope is that eventually there will be a, a Tempest quad and there'll be, we'll, be certified in it and there'll be classes at, uh, for Tempest and Chase Tag and all that. That'd be the eventual dream. Um, in the meantime, though, we're just kind of working with what we have, uh, trying to push the aspect of instead of being like, no, we don't have a quad, wah, to be like, no, we can still do good without a quad. Um, to, to be honest, there is another team that you probably know, a Fata Morgana. They don't have a quad as well, and they're actually doing like really well. They they did come twice these last couple of months uh, for some events in France, and they actually won both of the events. So it was like you know quite impressive. And I, I think that there are still ways to perform well and train for Chase Tag without having a quad. So. Yeah, T Tempest has been a huge name in the parkour industry for like many years. Like like the way you build gyms and everything. It's now coming like a big name in Chase Tag. Like you've been there from the beginning. You went from like a good team, but now like one, probably one of the favorites for yeah, these events, the Pan American yeah, Championship. Yeah, you can say we were very good. Year yeah, <laughs> but not to, in my eyes, like for this competition, you, you are one of the top contenders with Apex and American Parkour Blue. And oh, yeah, like, uh, if people don't know, we are right before Pan Ams right now. Yeah, we don't know the results and this will air after the competition, so we'll know how well you performed. Um, coming back to what you're doing, you're running chess tag nights. What's happening there? What kind of uh, sessions do you play? Do you play full games? How do you set it up? Typically, the way it'll be run in our gym is we'll announce it for a while, like before all our classes, like, hey, next Saturday we're doing a chase tag night, and we have it set in two age divisions. So it's ages like 9 to 16 will be the first chunk, and then 16 up was afterwards. So usually each about like two hours long. And then since we don't have a quad, we just take two chunks of our gym. We take like the front, like Mario section, if you know what I'm talking about. And then there's the back, which is like the bar cage and all the other walls. And then the front one's a little more like kid friendly. It's kind of just a lot of like big walls. There's a little more like climbing up and over things, which is kind of fun at times. You're like, oh, there is no thread option, which with Nicodemus, there's, there's always a thread option. Um, you will find one. But the front one's kind of like very open space, kind of a lot of just open juking. And then just every now and then there's like a couple stride routes that kind of feel like the sisters. Um, and in the back, it definitely gets a little more intricate. Uh, usually each time we do it, I'll walk in and I'll be like, what are you making today? And Nick will try to have like a loading bay set up and then kind of just filled in around it. Or, oh, here's like, we have the sisters in the back, or this is the best ridge we can make today, or it'll kind of be like a, a makeshift something from the quad, mm -hmm. and then kind of just filled in around it with any other options. And how often do you run these events? Like if I, if you're anyone like around LA, the LA region, how often can they play Chase Tag? Where they should look for information, like your website, Instagram? Well, now that we have the Chase Tag Instagram or the Tempest Chase Tag, I'll put all the information there when we're going to have chase tag jams and whatnot. We're trying to go to more uh, Tempest gyms with it. But optimally, I like to do them once a month, and it's kind of based on when competition is. So we're going to take April off to let everyone rest, and we'll probably start back up in May, and then just move on from there. Once a month or once every other month is my main goal. And then another thing that we also like to have too, because it depends on how many people show up, is we like to add little challenges. So we'll do call outs so somebody can call out anyone in the gym, including the coaches who are working and you just gotta hand the stopwatch off and jump on. The kids really like that. 
And then for the adults, sometimes not that many people show up. So we'll do like workshops at the end. So the first hour will be tag based. And then uh, the last like hour, 45 minutes, we did pro challenges. So we had a, a setup of like how small could you thread? And then could you get through uh, the loading bay and still get back to your feet? And we have it's ideas of like strides. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And is it uh, open to beginners? Oh yeah, we want as like we want the pros there, and we also want somebody who literally just saw Chase Tag yesterday, and then to come in and have fun and just get comfortable there. My uh, forty, I don't know how old my dad is, but he showed up for one jam. He was hitting lazy balls or something. Yeah, we were we were just having a Chase Tag jam, and this guy walks in. He's like, "You're Brett, right?" And I'm like, "I don't know if I know you." He's like, "I'm Nicodemus's dad." <laughs> And watching Nick versus Dad was yeah. probably the, one of the favorite matches I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. And I will say, Nick's dad got the tag. Oh, uh, Shout out wow. Sean Flannery. Yeah. He's a beast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was so much fun. But yeah, it's, it's the, honestly, the more the merrier. Um, if you don't even know what's really going on, we're there to teach you and explain it to you so a quick question do you have any videos of that chase oh i do uh, now send it to us oh, <laughs> so, it to it. so just coming back to the question about beginners because i feel like sometimes people who've never played the game they get easy tags you build up that whole like oh i'm gonna do this if they come here and they just do like the weirdest routes and the stu sometimes the stupidest decisions but you just don't expect it and you just caught off guard and you're just like completely out uh, of it oh Yeah. Definitely. Um, every now and then you'll you'll be like, oh yeah, I've just evaded a bunch of people or whatever is going on. Because um, every now and then you're just you feel good. The way yeah. the way Nick usually has us do it is he'll give us a win condition, so he won't let us stop trying until we've achieved it. So it's like, okay, you need to get three Benny Hills in a row, or you have to get the tag in this one spot, and it's like, you just got, or yeah, QMs only, crawling only. Um, so it's you just got to get those drills, and then every now and then you're like. Okay, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to get out of here. Like, I just want to get this one tag I need and get off the quad or get off the course for the next person. And then someone who's like you've never seen in your life, they walk up. They're kind of like, oh, you, you talk to them a little bit. You're like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what's going on. I, just, I saw the ad on Instagram and came through. And the next thing you know, they're sprinting at you, <laughs> and it's like, oh, you have zero technique for getting over anything, but it is terrifying, and I'm not ready for it at all. So every now and then, it's just like, oh gosh, no, I got to get away. They, they, the next thing you know, you're just running into them because it's just, just completely so, so random. Who held the best records of evasions in a row? Like, who made the most evasions in a row? I think it's we a guy. These two champs right here. Hunter in a row. with... Yeah? We got Kai with 10 in a row day one. Yeah. Ooh. And then Hunter did... That one time, I think I got Another match eight. where you did eight, paused for one, came back and did another eight in a row. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that one was oh, pretty great. legendary. <laughs> That's yeah, good. Man. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, that, that's one of the biggest appeals of World Chase Tag is like anyone can come in the quad or in the arena that you're playing in and just have fun straight away. You don't have to be like a good parkour athlete. No. You don't have to be even a good sports person. No, no. You can just come in. You can just adjust the level. Obviously, you're not going to want like a seven-year-old to just run into the bars or right. something. Yeah. But I, anyone can have fun straight away. And yeah, I had a similar experience where I did bring my older brother Hey, uh, at some point from the quad and he, like he's not really doing much sport or anything and so he did come on the quad like 30 something etc and I was like you know I'm gonna be chilling like and as soon as he and like his friends started to play they were going like crazy diving and and I was like whoa these guys have no chill <laughs> like, the whole <laughs> evening the whole evening they were like oh chase tag is so cool everyone should play that's really interesting that's yeah that was nice so It's always so hype watching like new people who are new to Chase Tag play Chase Tag for the first time because they're just doing the craziest stuff. It's always so cool to see. Like people don't have a survival instinct once they get into the quad. They're like, yeah. fuck it, I'm going. Like you've <laughs> yeah. been giving parkour classes. I've done for like over 10 years. You would ask someone to jump like that high to another thing. They'd be like, no, I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna hit my shins or something. Chase Tag, you're just like diving in between bars, landing on your face and you're like, having fun and just laughing about it you just yeah. like i'm bleeding yeah. that's fun <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds like someone i know oh yeah yeah I hit my... <laughs> don't out yeah. me like and that then... it's uh kind of like if you were to play smash bros and you're like okay i know like this that and the other and then like your cousin comes over and you're like watch me beat you in smash bros and then yeah, they're just, they're just like and you're like touching <laughs> everything no technique just yeah like, exactly and they win that like. <laughs> was sean with kirby yeah with me i was yeah. messed up Yeah, today we were playing uh, Super Smash Bros. And I just picked Kirby randomly and I just almost beat Hunter. He still won, but 
We were very close. It was yeah, a close context. match. Hunter doesn't lose, <laughs> mainly because he uses the same move over and oh, over and over. It is a grab. You can dodge it. There's no right? dodging. It's it's <laughs> so cheesy. You can dodge a bro. Yeah, it's yeah. so yeah. cheesy. Yeah. So when, Sean, when Sean and I were playing, I was like, oh, he's choosing Kirby. All right, awesome. This will be a fun little match. And I just see him like teleporting basically he's like pressing so many inputs that i can't focus and next thing i know i am just like 80 meters off the stage and i'm just like okay cool i guess i'm facing the flash that's awesome thanks man but yeah no it's it's literally it is the whenever a new person comes in it is honestly just that survival instinct just yeah. goes off and they just straight sprint beeline just only see you nothing else on the quad and go for it and i think that's hilarious to see and also can make for some funny strategies that sometimes work yeah and then i also find it kind of cool how like there's always so many new people learning about chase tag specifically because i feel like with like parkour or anything it's like everyone's like oh i know parkour but very few people actually know when they say like i know what parkour is and they don't have like a real idea there is a learning curve to parkour like you can come into a gym it's hard to make it that fun from the like, yeah. I feel like if you don't know anything, you're gonna walk on the ground. You're gonna have to walk your way up. Yeah. Uh, and it's maybe not like some people enjoy the process. Some people just like they came in because they wanted to learn the backflip or because they saw Yamakase or like store and they want to go on roofs. And you're not gonna give them this because they came for a parkour class. Yeah. So there is a clash between what they want to get and what they actually get. Yeah. Whereas Chase Tag, like you sign up for a Chase Tag class, you're gonna play Chase Tag. Yeah. And, that's gonna be fun straight away. That's one of the main draws to the sports. One of the main reasons I asked first Nico to come on the podcast was like, from what I've seen on Instagram, all the videos you share, all the threading technique you, you come for, uh, with, you say like you thread like, what is the tightest gap? Joe that you can went do in? eight inches, which is like that big. All right. And then we've like, done, sideways. Yep. we can do 10 <laughs> easy, nine starts getting a little uh, dicey. But no one can hit eight as fast as Joe. I think that's the yeah. smallest yeah, monster. Yeah, is that the one that you shared online? Like, uh, with, like yeah, the one I, I posted of Joe was of eight. Oh yeah. It. And the one where I posted Brett finishing his five hundred, that one was ten inches. That's what okay. we normally work with. Uh, so yeah, that was one of the main topics. Like, how do you train for this? But before that, who gave the name threading to it? Do you know? That's a good question. Yeah. I think. Who came up with it? I think it's been in just the parkour community for a long time because I know yeah. like there'd be like dive rolls through holes and then there was a guy PK Masa who would like hurdle through them and like slink through. They were called <laughs> Jackie Chan jumps I think in 2010 or like 2008 no but then way. it became threading and then that just kind just of that's just the lingo I use. So yeah. when Seth did his thing back in what was the first match 2019 yeah. where he did the slide against United that was just kind of like the the spark point I'm starting to call it. So how, how would you define threading in the context of chase tag for people who don't know what? I, I think a thread is anytime you're going through a really small space without touching the initial space. So um, in chase tag, if you're going to go, we'll think the tilty cube because that one's my favorite. You have the edge of the block and then the bar. If you touch either of those, it no longer becomes a thread. You're just climbing through. So you have to get past the initial and then you hit the Kong. If you go to your stomach and you start sliding early, that becomes a penguin slide and it's not as good. <laughs> yeah. I feel like penguin slides are a bit overrated, but that's that's a personal opinion. Being able to get to your foot out of the Kong, out yeah, of it, it gives you so much more options. Forward. You can jump out of it, you can stand back up, you can, it just, just a little Sliding more Sliding is a good like, last result solution. Yeah, of course, of course. You're just... like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna yeah, launch for it. But if you're trying to be a little more precise, that thread gives you a little more consistency going through. But that's really cool, like to see chase tag and obviously chase tag athletes uh, bring that threading technique to an extra level. I don't think, except for a few very specific individuals in parkour, but you would see so many people walking that people walk kongs, precision jumps, flips, a running prey, whatever. They don't walk that much going into tight gaps or something. That's yeah. not. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't look as impressive in parkour as well. It looks impre impressive in chase tag because of the speed and because you're going for someone. Yeah. It's yeah. just like it gives an extra incentive to be doing the, ex the, the impressive thing. Everyone here, if they do a penguin slide and it doesn't <laughs> result in a tag, they have a hundred push-ups. Yeah, every yep. time, because that just don't fly. That is stackable. <laughs> that includes me. Now, do we have to get the tag on the slide, or just as long as we end the round with the tag? It's you got to get the tag on the slide. Oh. If you slide and the hand misses, 
and you get the tag at the end, like it's still, it's still 100 okay. push-ups. You, you have to do your 100 push-ups during the 25 yeah. second rests. <laughs> between two chases. In between the chases. <laughs> With Nico behind me, like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, walk us through your process of like, me, I'm shitty, I'm, sh I'm shit at threading. What would you have me do the first time I come to your gym to walk on threading techniques? It can be anyone talking, probably you're gonna be the first one. So the way I like to look at it is the most basic one is the Kong. It's the hardest one to do like perfect, but it's the easiest to get comfortable. So I'd have someone work like just a monkey up on a block, like hands on, jump up to their feet. And then that's the closest to a push up. It's just straight up and down. And then I'd have them do like the dive bomber push up where you like come in low and push back up. And then they would do that same technique on the block. So they would be coming, instead of just straight up, they'd come up and over like this. And then you get like a pool noodle or something light and you get them comfortable reaching out and just pulling onto their stomach. So you get that uh, penguin slide, you go a little faster, a little faster until you can slide comfortably. And then the hard part, when things start getting a little uh, spicy, is as you dive, you want to get your hands as far out as possible. So then you don't want to hit head, shoulders, lower back is through. And then it's a quick push to your feet. Because if you try to push up too early, you're going to hit your head. And if you go in slow, then you're not going to have the timing right. So you have to get comfortable going fast with the slide until it gets comfortable, which I say a whole bunch of times. And then eventually the slide just becomes a little tap. So, so when you talk about the slide, you're not talking about the penguin slide. You're talking, talking putting your hands, sliding with your hands until you're able to just stop and push on it. Yeah. So you would start like sliding hands and belly, penguin slide oh, first. Belly you slide on? Yeah. Okay. And then from there, you kind of lean in more to your hands. So you're kind of sliding hands and then you can slow down with like legs, especially if you're on a block. And then if you get comfortable enough sliding on your hands, then instead of like going across, you come up and then pop it. I don't know if it's relevant, but when you're training all of this, obviously you're not training on metal bars, I guess. Does it change something like when you are actually using that technique on the quad? Like, do you have fear um, now as part of the equation as well? Like, or you're just as comfortable as and on the same note like would you recommend walking first with pool noodles and like something soft before moving to the steel or walking straight cl as close as possible to the real situation you can do it real situation it'll take a little bit more time but i think um i think you can go even on concrete with a different setup as long as you just start with the like a monkey up on a block and then start crawling through it and then just ease your way in. And you can do, Kai's been getting pretty good at like hands in and one leg. So it's almost like a starfish dive. And it's a good middle ground because you don't risk um, hitting your head as you go in. You can kind of guide it in a little bit better. Yeah, their Kongs through a bonkers, man. I've been watching them, like watching the videos. It's insane. Yeah, I just, I, I'm a bit more trying to make it like a, like a step through, step bolt kind of thing. So yeah, more like the Sliger technique. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm definitely. But I would going back to what you're saying. I'd say the biggest difference, because um, we definitely do a lot of our drills in, at least in our practice with uh, the metal bars and stuff. Um, so I'm sure we've all hit our lower back a fair, yeah, yeah, that's fair amount yeah, of times. Yeah, that, we, that's we've the all, thing, like, like, so many. I was, was going to come to this. Yeah. Like, do you use any protection for, like, when you train or when you play chase tag? Do you use knee pads? Some teams have shin pads, shin guards. Uh, I know some teams have elbow pads as well. When I first got into chase tag i was kind of like personally adamant like i didn't care if anyone else used pads at all but i'm like no i don't want to use pads like if i'm good enough like i won't get hurt and then we went to colorado we trained with some of the apex guys this was right after rob shill hit his shin and i remember seeing his uh like his, his calf was kind of like attributed for a while and that's when i saw him in vancouver and he's like yeah man i just hit my shin during one chase and then when i was at his house just talking to him about it him and then jared duty were there and both of them were talking about how like it doesn't even matter like if you're that good if you hit your knee just bad once you're not walking the next day yeah. so like, if you get the tag and you're like oh my knees whatever it's not worse so now I, I personally i do wear knee pads and shin guards um that that's all and then i guess i have a little like leg sleeve too but that's more for compression that was easy yeah. to talk into pads and i was still like nah i'm a parkour <laughs> athlete for 15 years yeah. i literally yeah. did the speed ball and yeah. slammed my knee like as i was saying that and i couldn't practice the rest of the day and I was like, all right, it's pads. And the very next day I work. Yeah, I, I feel like knee and shin guards are probably like at least the minimum level of like, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're going to slide, you're going to hit your knee, you're going to go it's on gonna QM, happen. whatever. Yeah. You're going to hit it. Basketball players wear shin pads and knee pads sometimes. Volleyball wears knee pads, soccer has shin pads. Like it allows the sport to keep going. Mm -hmm. You might be cool if you can do it without it, but like how sad would you be 
if Jared Ludy smacked his shin and then can't play full on the next day. Like yeah, as an yeah. audience, you need to see the athlete fully going out and like performing. So just wear the pads for the audience, wear it for you. I've been doing it for 15 years as well. So for me, when I started wearing protections, I was like, I'm not a true tracer anymore. Like I, like, I, I can't accept, like people made fun of me in the gym, but like, oh, you're wearing protections now because I was making fun of it at the beginning. Uh, so, so, I, so I feel you on this. It's called, it's called karma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I, what I think is like in parkour, usually like when you train, you have time to prep your jumps. Like you, you have time yes. to just think about it. Think of the, you, you rarely like 100% and you have control of most of what's happening. Chase tag, you're just like going with the flow. Like, oh, he's going there, I have to go here. Uh, Oh, he's doing this. I have to do this. Oh, you're pushing me, so I'm falling down. It's not. It's not only me into the into the thing. It doesn't make sense to apply what I had in parkour to chase tag because it's not the same discipline even. Yeah, I will say I only wear the shin pads when competing, only because I just find them a little uncomfortable. Um, knee pads I'll wear when we're starting to do a lot of threads, because uh, every the now occasional and then, just hmm. every now and then I, I I'll, I'll be like ah oh, I won't wear them this week. I'll be fine. Like <laughs> it's kind of hot in here. My, I don't. Want my knees getting sweaty. And then I do one and I'm just like, oh, okay, <laughs> let me go put the pads on real quick. I got a coach later and then. It's kind of like the parkour rule when you learn it yeah. and you do it on concrete and you hurt yourself and you're like, I don't want to try it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. I did it. I did it. I got Let's a fun on. one for y'all. So I don't wear pads in practice. I think like just rep and rep and rep. And then you put the pads on when you uh, compete and then you can just go for it. But my shin is permanently covered in scratches and yeah. bruises and like i have this bruise on my thigh that just won't go away which probably <laughs> won't be good that happens with but, pads, yeah. yeah actually amy amy has some nice ones as well <laughs> oh yeah beautiful i would oh. while his pant leg is up i don't want to point out that he's a thread tattoo yeah, yeah, for yeah. his yeah. threads <laughs> yeah we didn't oh, notice no yeah, yeah. I don't know if people can see it, but I might take just a picture. So it's oh, weird. absolutely, <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. Did you do it because of Chase Tag? Yeah, there's other stuff too. But I mean, I was doing threads before Chase Tag. How was it for you to explain to the tattoo artist? Like, I want just like a needle, and just. Oh, I have so <laughs> like all of my tattoos are from the same guy. So okay. at this point, I'll message him like, I'm just trying to get two of these things. And he's like, All right, come on in. <laughs> so by this one, I had. I think this is number nine. So at that point, he's like, yeah, spool of thread. Makes sense. <laughs> it's easier not? than this one to explain. <laughs> no, which one is it? Like, so this one, this is just uh, like a, a Zen circle, like meditation, the beauty okay. of imperfection. Uh, isn't there uh, like a gym in the US with this logo? Like yeah, Enzo? there's an Enzo gym. Yeah. Yeah. But the cool thing is there's actually like four other Chase Tag athletes who have this same tattoo. Bear has one on his shoulder and Luddy has, Jared Luddy has one on his chest. So saying one day we'll have to like in uh, Avatar, they have the White Lotus game. Yeah, It'll yeah. be the, the yeah, secret nice. Enzo game. <laughs> so we usually have a little ritual in the podcast, so it, it might be difficult today, but uh, we like to ask people if they could create the best team of Chase Tag, like the best team ever created, who would they pick? Because you're seven, I'm thinking that maybe each one of you could pick someone. Oh, I'll like, mm. just pick all these guys. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna uh, say. <laughs> so, so usually just to prevent that, we just tell you like, if you could pick anyone but yourself. Because every athlete is just like, I'm gonna pick my friends. Like, we're gonna, we are the best team. We're not gonna ask obviously, someone else. Obviously, you don't wanna be rude, like, oh, I'm gonna pick this guy, but not yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not taking Nico, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, this world here. Like, I already know I'm not gonna all of these guys to be on my team. So. <laughs> right, and you already picked. So I don't okay, think I I'm can pick. <laughs> I would easily, he doesn't do chase tag, but I would pick Daryl Stingley. Like, I am yeah. Wavezilla on Instagram. Uh, I love Daryl with all my heart. Him and all the squad, you guys at Garrett, shout out. Um, however, I think he would be an animal. He would be amazing. I, he, he would be, be amazing. He has be such terrifying. a He is so He's powerful. Just, yeah. His rep mentality is he would find every possible thing he can do and do it a million times. So he's like, I'm never going to mess up on this again. Yeah, hands, and, hands down, he would be like an amazing. So I, that's my does pick. Does he like, right have there. any interest in Chase Tag? Do you uh, know? I know Garrett does, or, or Garrett's mentioned it every now yeah. and then. I don't think Daryl really has much of a yeah. care for it. Yeah. He's definitely a skill athlete. Yeah. So maybe we should send him a message on Instagram and be like, if you want to join them, best A. Hey. So, so basically, like your first pick is someone that never played Chase Tag. That's still a like very good pick. Like that's, yeah. still, that's still a I very, very good pick. That's a strong one. I was approaching it a little differently, but yes, I'm going to stick with it. He was my coach. I'm sticking with it. That's what, that was a love letter. Like, Daryl. No, yeah, Daryl, join us. 
<laughs> well, one of the people I would choose would be uh, Jared Ludy. Mm-hmm. His just oh, overall yeah. like skill and mental game of Chase Tag is just, I think, one of the best. Mm-hmm. So I think it'd be really cool to have him on my, yeah. my team. I got to go with Damien on Apex Sun. I love Damien. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Damien DeVoe. I was like, oh, that's nah, a yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just first time ever meeting him was when we were training. And where were we doing our first? We flew out to go train. It was in Denver. Yeah. So we flew out to go train. I saw that he had a Overwatch jersey on, like from the game Overwatch. And we both rep the same team. So I just went up and started talking to him. I had no clue what team he was on. I didn't know anything about him. I just started talking to him and... We had a good vibe, and on the um, Texas comp, sadly, I didn't get to play against them for unfortunate circumstances. You know, skull bashed in, but um, but I don't know. I've just always really vibed with them, and I would love them to be on like dream team. Sorry. The All Star team based on vibes. Yeah. <laughs> vibes. Sean so I mean, is like, you know, you he's got a really nice style. You have like, yeah. you have two Apex, and you have one probably one of the strongest yeah. American athletes. Oh, yeah. So that. You're not going with bad picks, not at all. but you're just going for the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but I still believe that Damien Devo would probably do better. I mean, I mean, Damien uh, played since the beginning of the game, so yeah. That's, yeah, a, right. that's a solid choice. Yeah. I want to hear Amy's pick. He said, "I want to hear Amy's pick." Oh, go on. I mean, my original pick was Jared, but it was taken. Um, I'd probably have to say Kyle Soderman, the absolute mm. gun. Yeah. As he <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And yeah, to, to be honest, these last couple of weeks, he was spending a lot of time in uh, Woodstock uh, training and like he did improve so much on the strategy. It's a brand inside. new Kyle. Well, I'm yeah. sure you, got, you guys have probably seen it now, but I do not know. Right. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. Maybe not. I have a picture of me evading him and I look terrified. I'm just like <laughs> staring him in the eyes like, oh my God. <laughs> right. It's like, um, that would be probably one of the best picks so far in my eyes, because mm. also that's a guy that leaves or walk close to you guys. So that would be easy to meet up and just live in Los Angeles. But he he walks there. Texas, I think, right? Yeah. But does he still kind of go? He goes back and forth. Yeah, Yeah, he has a place in LA. He spends a lot of time in LA, in a way. So it would be easier to- I want him, I'm calling you out here, Kyle. Come to our Chase Tag Jams. (laughs) If you're in LA, you've never been, come down. Omar's come, Wes is there. Come to the jams, Kyle. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be a good time. So you've got Daryl Wavezilla, Daryl Luthien. Damien Zumtobo and Cal Sodoman. Stacked. That's pretty good. You still have three picks because you have seven. I think, uh, yeah, I was kind of on the fence, like, you know, Jared Ludi maybe would have been my first pick. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to go, and Nico, I don't, you might be thinking the same, but I would probably have to go with Jason from Apex Moon. He's just like, he's crazy, but he's also just so ridiculously fun to watch. And it's just like, it's just like every match that he's in is so exciting he's also so handsome that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah the whole package <laughs> nice um for me i gotta go amos there's an argument to be made in terms of the single person who has progressed the sport the most i think it's got to be him his technique his brain the way he figures mm. things out and breaks things down really 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 incredible and to have that on an all-star team would be invaluable and, and actually you did spend a lot of time and I, we spent a lot of time in, uh, in Atlanta, me and Amy uh, training on the quad there. And uh, and Amos was there, so we spent a lot of time with mm. him. And, and he's just the nicest guy. But, good and yeah, good vibes, so oh, check. Love vibe. Incredibly vibe. smart. Yeah. And then uh, also an absolute killer athlete in, in his own right. Everybody keeps talking about his brain and like, yes, but mm. man, yeah, he's, he's, he's scary, he's scary. Yeah. From what I've heard, when they run the trainings in Colorado, like with the Apex team when they first built it, he was one of the players with the highest rate of tags and evasions or something. So he's not like everyone's, as you say, is talking about like, oh, he's a great strategist. He, do, he would be a great coach, but he's an amazing athlete. And he's, he's long, over 40 man. years old. No one realizes it, but, and that's that's amazing. Like I'm waiting to see any one of you guys after 40 years old playing chase tag. I mean, we will need to wait a yeah, long time. because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people here are barely- Hunter is probably 12 or something. So who didn't pick yet? Uh, yeah, Nico. That's tough. Our team is so American right now. Yeah, you, I, it's not. It's not even tough. Seth Wang. Yeah. Seth Wang. <laughs> yeah. The way he we like runs. Just... He's got the number six six six. The reason why I do the threads that way. 
it's gotta be said. So you pick five athletes from Apex. Yeah, we just made we Apex made plus Apex. Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. So. Plus Kyle and Wave Zilla. Yeah. Kind of like a love letter to Apex. So. Yeah. <laughs> Apex are undefeated champions, right? Yeah. It's yeah like that's true. Some overlooked athletes in this discussion because you talked only about Americans. Like no one mentioned Orlando. The vote. No one mentioned Harun from Eugene. No one mentioned um, who, even Rob Schill, which is not uh, European. No one mentioned Naim from Parkour 59. Like there is like many athletes in Europe. You have no idea. I like I'm waiting to see you guys in He's Europe. Beast. Who? So Augustine. Carole. Yeah, Augustine. Carol. Oh, yeah. I love that guy. Carol. Did I say Carol before? Uh, I probably said it. Nice as guy. Nice as yeah. guy. He's so nice. That's um, the guy that's called the uh, winning uh, evasion for United oh, yeah. when they won the championship. Oh, yeah. Well, well, hopefully for you guys, you will be qualified for Worlds and you will be able to come to London and maybe we could do another podcast around yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, we'll that. Nice. we'll that just want cool. every European athlete. You didn't pick any. Just be like that. It's just, it's just salty, but he's we'll French. Do a, we'll, so. we'll do another team. We'll pick our European <laughs> team. Don't, don't yeah. mind him. He's just salty. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just had one question because earlier you did mention Hollywood free runners. Like, what is your relationship with them? Are you training together sometimes? Not at all. I'm really, really good friends with Wes Preston. He's, I love Wes with all my heart. Phenomenal. He trains with us constantly. Um, Omar comes in pretty regularly. He's a great guy. I, I'm, I'm friends with all of them. I think they're all phenomenal people. Um, just, I don't train with all of them. I see Wes the most, uh, then Omar probably second. And then after that, I, oh, Miguel as well. Miguel comes into Tempest quite soon. Miguel is a beast. Like, not just chase tag wise. Like, this guy's Lachey's, like his oh, yeah. swings. He's just a crazy athlete. Dude, and Miguel is just such a um, nice so, dude, too. I got a super sick story about Wes. 2021, we didn't know if there was going to be a Tempest team. There was a whole bunch of stuff going on that year. So every weekend, I went to just like a local high school and I trained World Chase Tag. And uh, most weekends, it was just me. But Wes, like I would say 85% of the time, it was just me and him running speed courses, slipping on dusty rails at high schools, and it was super sick. So like, shout out to Wes for being there every weekend in 2021. And then when I found out that we were gonna put the team back together, Wes was one of the guys I was gonna ask, but he was on Hollywood uh, before I had a chance to ask him, so that was super sick. But that was fun to be like- To see how we went, went from, from humble beginnings to a pretty solid team. I just wanna add like one extra question for I Amy. I just have one more question. But and, yeah, and then maybe we can stop. But that wasn't stop. for Amy, I don't want to stop with Amy. Because <laughs> you're mean, see, French people are mean. That's why no one likes I, us. I, I, didn't see, I, I didn't see Amy. <laughs> you don't know, no one has the reference, you're too young. No one knows Britney Spears here. If you see Kami. No, never heard of her. Like, <laughs> is she a new singer? Like, <laughs> <laughs> really? Who? Britney Spears. Lost generation, really. Lost generation. Yeah. Anyway, Britney so, Spears. Apparently, Nico is also training you. Are you guys planning on creating maybe a Tempest women's team with Amy as the captain? Because I think she might be the best female athletes in the world. Oh, easily. <laughs> easily. Well, so. So that's a secret project. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Amy was one of the first picks to be on the Tempest team because she also was there at the at the first jam where Kai got his ten evasions, and she was evading and getting tags that everyone was surprised to see. So I had her first person on the Tempest uh, team chat. Things happened. Some individuals got injured. Some didn't. And I was just ho always hoping for Amy to get a chance to be on the quad. And then when I found out from Cozy that I think Omar recommended you for Konoichi, I was like, yes, perfect. So I was like super stoked uh, for like Amy to be competing. But the hope is before my uh, chase tag arc is over, we're going to beat Apex Moon and then I'm going to retire and Amy can just take the, the Tempest position mm -hmm. and just run it on the open division. So would you like to do that, Captain of Tempest? Definitely not cap <laughs> Captain. <laughs> that can go to Brett. Yes. But that would definitely be a dream to play on the Tempest team in the Open League. But yeah, hands down, she's the best female athlete. That's not, Easily. that's, I mean, there's a, that's not to disrespect any other. In the that's USA. Not to disrespect any other. Yeah. <laughs> but I think also, I think some of the girls from uh, Anarchy might be at the level of Amy. Yeah. We're going to see how this see weekend goes, yeah, right? We're find out real soon. soon. Yeah, yeah. I see the pressure's on now. You have to. <laughs> and, <laughs> it, <laughs> and it's really hard to gauge because at the moment, like, at least with the American Women's League, there's only a couple games, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's so very it, small, but yeah. It, 
Yeah. Amy, yeah. You, you say all this, but like she's only played two games before, so yeah. we'll see. Well, yeah. As the little bros are saying, like, she's not that good. Just like... <laughs> Big brother, come on. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, How old are you? I'm 21, my friend. <laughs> you look so much younger. You look they like said, 16 or something. They said that earlier yeah. today. They had the same reaction. Yeah. Yeah. But to be yeah. honest, I was there watching the matches. I think Amy is better. <gasps> A super sick story for Amy is because uh, we just put her on the team. At that point, it was everyone you see here, plus Nate and Jeff and Tavon, and then a couple of other uh, Tempest athletes, Brian, Mario, shout out. We weren't going easy on anybody. So when we were doing like conditioning courses, like 20 seconds on full sprint, 10 seconds off, and Amy's tired, I'm like, you're on the team, Amy. You just got to keep running. So uh, the training. Uh, yeah. I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> we all were. I saw I saw both of you guys doing this. It, it was really interesting. Like you were going like one way on the quad, and then the other one was doing the other way on the quad, and you were like really trying to work on your cardio. And it was right, cool. right. Before we, because we've had uh, a lot of time on the quad in the past month. Uh, in Atlanta, but before that we were doing cardio work, we were doing sprint training mm. and we actually stayed with Kyle and Kyle Soderman and Megan in, in Texas for a little bit and we and they would do sprint training and we would join in and then once we had a quad we're like okay we'll just stick this onto a quad so it's 20 seconds just sprinting as much as you can then you get 20 seconds off you do that six times and then you do that block three times. So we might have a challenge for for one of the guys from Lyon, because he was doing like what two, so we have two a laps guy. and a half, uh, in twenty yeah, seconds. Yeah. I oh. think I think I might, might do. We have a guy in Lyon in uh, where we live um, called Emil. He plays for Kimeo. He comes to train at the gym. Sometimes he comes in, he does a hundred chases in a row with five second rests in between chases with different people coming in against him. Oh. Um, he does like fifty chases as the chaser, fifty chases as the evader, no matter what, like the result of it. Right. Um, he comes training with like you know the sudation suit and like the mask and everything and he, do, he would do like 50 chases with five second rest with that and everything and one of his thing is like how many laps you can do in 20 seconds if you're over two that's good but that's not exceptional if you're over two and a half that's like that becomes good if you can do three that's like almost exceptional three laps in uh, just little specification because you cannot use the high road you have to go under the mountain, behind the tilted cube, under the sisters, behind the lazy boy, behind the ridge, under the bench. And you have to really like use only like the, the floor. You cannot like use the, the guac truck or anything. We, we might have a new contender. We should do like the, the Smash Bros. You yeah. Know? <laughs> new challenger approaches. The champ over here. I think he could get three laps in 20 seconds. Woo! I think I could do it. I think I think I'd have to say, I'd have to try it, but Every I'm time. pretty confident. Every time uh, on Thursdays we do like specific conditioning and speed course classes, like I'll be like, Hunter, try to do this course that we did in 30 seconds. Try to do it in 15, see if you can do it. And he'll like, he'll get like 14.3. I'm like, I didn't, oh God. <laughs> I, I just had one last question. The way we, when we discussed like preparing this episode, we talked about what is our vision of Tempest. You, we didn't know you that much guys, like personally, like we didn't interact that much. But from what we've seen in the events, from what we've seen online and stuff, uh, you are a team that consistently bring new players, young players to the quad. We call you like the training center for USA, like bringing new heads, new people to chase tag. Do you think you are different in that regards to the other teams? Some teams bring like experienced athletes where you bring like experienced athletes, but not in the world of chase tag and you just make them come to you. Nico is certainly my introduction to chase tag. Yeah, and yours, there. and yours. Yeah, yeah, mine too. Think it and yours. Having a gym to, to operate out of, because I know not every team does have, like Apex has a gym and a quad, and, but not every team has that. So it definitely is useful to be like, okay, these kids have been, like like myself and Sean, like pretty much almost everyone here was students at Tempest. Like, I, like earlier I mentioned Daryl Singley because he was my coach. Like uh, we all grew up in the gym there's always talent coming in. And then especially once the more the coaches ourselves like Chase Tag, we kind of start sneaking into our classes. It's like, oh, this is a beginner class. Like it's nothing Chase related, but like we can start learning a few little, little dip dives and dodges here and there. And then after a while, you'll kind of be like, oh, this guy's been coming in a lot and he's doing really well. And then it's just, it definitely helps a little bit having the space to operate from. Yeah. Nico is the whole reason I'm even a competitive person in the first place. I just growing up, I, I didn't care if I won or lost or like competing at all. That never interested me at all because I grew up um, doing martial arts and they would 
you know, they would be like, hey, Hunter, you should try out on these, like, tournaments and, like, fly on stuff. And I'm like, no, that's not what I want to be doing. When I was started going to Tempest and, like, uh, learning there, Nick would start doing, like, these, like, speed courses and conditioning stuff. And I got super focused on being as fast as possible. I wanted to always get the first place, even even though it didn't matter all, because it's just training. But uh, Nico's the whole reason that I have a competitive bone in my body and is the reason I'm doing chase tag in the first place. You couldn't tell that if you watch him evade <laughs> someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's so competitive. Saying, like, you say that, but just that means so we talk about like, Hulk, yeah, Smash Bros and Hulk, and you're like, no, he cheats, he was doing this. That's different, that's different. I do agree, that's different. <laughs> so, he may not have been that competitive before. Now. <laughs> I like the idea, like it helps that we have a gym, but there's just so many, like parkour only has so many opportunities. There's such a great feeling to be the athlete and to just see someone else's progression. Like somebody who might be meek of spirit, like sees, oh, I can go fast. I can like overcome an obstacle and just see that evolution in them. And so my biggest thing is I just wanna see as many people get that opportunity to like challenge themselves. Not everyone's gonna be the next uh, Jason, uh, how do you say his last name? Uh, Jason Wu Belgeron. Jason. Uh, <laughs> no one's gonna, like, you don't know if you're gonna be the next that, but like, you could get a tag on someone you didn't think you could. And so there's so many varying levels of just like being a champion and believing in each person is just the most fun. So we could get Daryl on the quad and that'd be cool. I'd prefer him get his interest on the quad versus like, there's a kid at the gym. He's a beast and he can already hit the thread super fast. And I wanna see him in nine years like out there under the lights. Mm. So that's my goal is the people who get that opportunity to show that like they're a superhero too. That's what I look for. So you're talking about this, like where do you see World Chase Tag in nine or 10 years in the US or in the world? The Olympics. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be kind of crazy. I think by 10 years, like actual paid athletes. Mm -hmm. So it won't be like out of pocket to get to competition. Like you'll have sponsors. You might have a gym that's like fully paying your way and you get paid by the sport to like represent, uh, that'd be the hope, so. Maybe paid by the clubs or something. I, I was going to say, we're working hard to make this happen, so hopefully it will happen. Oh, thank yeah. you guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, shout out. As far as I know, if you type on Google, how much chase tag player makes, it's <laughs> like, about 5,000 per month. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, right. So that's like, I don't know why you're complaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I think that's long enough for yeah, today. Yeah, that's good. One hour. Thank you, guys. I love your vibes. I love your energy. I love yeah, everything. Thank, you, yeah, yeah, thank you very much for accepting to it. Um, I hope you liked it. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and there is there is absolutely no pressure. But if you're finishing at least top three, then we will see you again in you know. Okay. Yes. We'll see, so see you So we'll see you again before us. Is this the longest uh, podcast you've done? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> so many people. That's yes. why we brought them all. That's why we brought them all. We just don't stop talking, really. Uh, no, that's good. That, that, that's what, that was a great one. If you liked it, you can subscribe. follow them on Instagram. Like you can subscribe uh, to us. You could and follow subscribe yes, to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've yeah. done one hour promotion for them. That's like, enough. Yeah. Smash that like button. We should do things like, you know, like if we reach a thousand and a hundred thousand subscribers, then maybe Kai will release the music video. With oh. <laughs> yeah, you guys want to see. Yeah, Kai is going to release it no matter what. We're going to get the video and we're going to add it no, to the podcast. No, 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 I might but not. what we should do is like, if we get 50 listeners to this, we work with Sky to make like a jingle at the end where it's just like Ooh, okay. a little a little pop song Actually, with you dancing on it. Make it, it one really? like and then I'll like the video. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to be the, the jingle of the word chase though? Because we could do something. Uh, let me, yes. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. Let's make it happen. What is this guy talking about? Yes, come on. <laughs> do it right now, on the spot. <laughs> Oh, uh, give me a, give me a. You don't need to be on the spot. You don't need to be on the spot. We should do an ASMR like, athletes ready. Oh my god. <laughs> Start scratching the microphone. <laughs> and that's when they end it. <laughs> that's a good thing. Bye, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. That was great. <laughs>